Hey, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of Ray of Light. This is the Colbor CL60R. It's a 65 watt RGB WW light with this really cool speed rail design on the side. So you're able to attach things like another light if you wanna double or triple or quadruple the output of your light. And then you can link these together in the Colbor Studio app or you can attach things like a V-mount battery and actually power this light through USB-C. So a lot more to go over in this video. So let's go ahead and dive into it. Welcome to episode two of Ray of Light. I'm your host, Ray Valencia, just your friendly neighborhood filmmaker. Actually, I'm a director of photography and videographer based out of Florida. And in this series, we're going over lighting, gear, and tutorials. So if that's something that you're interested in, make sure you subscribe. But what we have here is a small, compact, stackable RGB light. So if you're interested in stepping up your backgrounds like this, like there's actually a Colbor CL60R that is making this this orange streak just off to the side here. And I have both of these lights linked up to my phone so I'm able to control them independently or you can actually group them on the same channel and control them simultaneously. And now we have two battery powered lights and we're able to control both of them with the Colbor Studio app. But I'll put all the topics we're gonna go over in this episode on the screen now. And if you're interested in jumping around, I'll have chapters listed down in the description below. All right, guys, so let's jump into our first topic. So this light's really gonna stand out because number one, it's really small, compact. It only weighs 1.2 pounds and only about three and a half inches wide. Compared to my other lights, it is absolutely tiny. The two lights on the left are also 60 watt lights, but neither of them can do RGB. All right, so first up we have the case and it actually comes with a really nice lunchbox style case, which I appreciate because everything fits nicely in here. It has a shoulder strap as well. Nice gray, like rugged material, hard top. And then you have a zippered pouch on top for putting things like different cables and stuff like that in. And it holds everything in here nicely. You have the reflector, which connects to the Bowens mount adapter. The power supply, which is a 90 watt USB-C power delivery power supply. You have the yoke. And then you have the Colbor CL60R light, which is fully made of aluminum. It has vents all around the side and then a rubber cap over the top, which protects the LED COB chip on the outside. And the chip itself also has a protective film over it, which actually keeps you from possibly damaging this in your transport, plus the rubber cap here as well to keep you from damaging it. So if that tells you anything about, you know, how you should be treating your lighting gear is to protect this chip. So they're giving you that there. So good score for the case. So let's pull this cap off. And this rail is also how you connect the Bowens mount. You simply just slide this over the top of the light and there you go, you're connected. So whenever it feels like it's nice and even, you know, you're on there good and that's not going anywhere. Oh, there he goes. Now it's locked into place. So once you hear that click, that's how you know you're locked into place with this Bowens mount adapter. And then that has the release on there too. So keep in mind that there are three options to choose from in the Colbor CL60 lineup. There is the CL60M, which is around 129. That is a daylight light only, and it has seven lighting effects with that light. Then you have the Colbor CL60, which is 149. That is a bicolor light. That one has 10 color effects in it. And then you have this one, the Colbor CL60R. This is the fully RGBW light, $199. This is the flagship model for the series. Just keep that in mind whenever you're looking for these lights that you wanna make sure you get the right model depending on what your needs and your budget are. So not only does the CL60R have the RGB effects, 
and millions of different colors that you can make in the light, but it also has 13 lighting effects versus the 10 and the seven in the other two lights because this one also has color effects that you can do too, like party mode, and you can even play music with this light and have it you know, play to the beat of the music. And the yoke is actually really, really high quality as well. It's fully made of metal from the inside right here is reinforced with some kind of aluminum or metal. And then you attach it to either the top of the light if you're gonna be hanging this light like in a studio setting, or you can actually attach this through the bottom rail of the light and then you just tighten down the clamp on the side of the yoke and now you can attach it to your light. You can fully tilt all the way down to all the way up. So 180 degree rotation with the yoke. So that's kind of nice. And then my favorite feature about the yoke is actually this cable holder here on the side. So it actually just screws right here and you can clamp down your cable, whether you're using the included USB-C 90 watt power delivery cable, or you happen to add on the D-tap or P-tap to USB-C cable like I have here. So I can just plug in my USB-C cable there and then clamp this down onto that and there's actually two clamps there and then I can connect this to the battery or whatever I need and you know if you wanted to you could even do this sideways like that if you want your cables to run this way so you can rotate this however you like I like just keeping it vertical but fully adjustable so I can just loosen it up a little bit pull this cable if I need more slack here for my battery and that's that's just a really cool feature that you don't have to worry about you know your cable getting yanked out or something along those lines Let's see if it can do that hard high angle it does just fine with the high angle now let's try the softbox hanging from a low angle Solid. This metal construction and the nice hand crank on here make it really, really nice with this cold bore CL60R. Very solid. So the yoke is really good in my opinion. I haven't had to worry about it slipping or anything like that. So really, really strong metal construction. So I like the yoke. So the yoke doesn't have an umbrella holder. So if you like the little photography umbrella soft modifiers, it doesn't have the holder for that. Although it does have this removable bones mount adapter that just slides on here and then it locks into place. And now you have access to all of your regular softbox modifiers or it comes with this little mini hyper reflector. So that just snaps on there like that. But how does the CL60R perform with a big 90 centimeter softbox? Well, that's exactly what you're seeing now. I have a huge softbox just here off to the side, and this would be a typical interview setup or maybe a YouTube setup, like I'm talking to the camera here, or even maybe have your subject looking off to the side, and this could be your interview light with a fully backlit subject. So let's see how this light compares to some of the other fixtures that we're gonna do here on the series. So there's no other lights on in here. The only thing that this is doing is just providing a little bit of an edge light here on my back shoulder and everything. But we have the big 90 centimeter softbox that's just a little bit over arm's reach away and that's what's providing the rest of this light. So here's what it looks like without. And now here's what it looks like with the big softbox and the CL60R. 60 watt lights can get you great results with a big softbox, but color accuracy can vary. Check my skin tones and the gray shirt tones against the Godox SL60 and the Aperture LS60X, which is my most color accurate light. Then let's throw in a 100 watt Zion Mollus X100 for output comparisons. Now you can see how important color accuracy is. On the CL60R, it tends to run about 250 to 300 degrees more towards daylight. Then it gets brighter and more color accurate the closer you get towards daylight. 
So when it comes to powering the light, it comes with this 90 watt USB-C cable. It's actually really thick quality cable. It has a laptop style brick for it. Let's see how long it is. Whoa, this USB-C cable is actually about nine feet long. So plenty of cable for actually like connecting this, you know, nine feet is pretty good. You know, you could always put down a, you know, power supply or a power splitter at the base of this and have this plugged in. And then you can go up to nine feet high on your stand from here. However, if you wanna take this up even higher than what this cable can reach, then you have the option to add on a P-tap to USB-C cable that comes with this little adapter so you're able to quickly slide on a V-mount battery right here onto the light and power it straight from a mini V-mount. And I can simply drop the battery on here and hit power and we're ready to go. So now I don't have to worry about the length of this nine foot cable, which seems plenty long enough for studio use for me but now you're able to just take this anywhere. I could, you know, throw this up on a light stand or go handheld or, you know, whatever you need for this lights. So that's really cool that you have this USB-C option. And if you happen to have those power banks that have power delivery, you could also use that on here with a regular USB-C cable. I have another video all about mini V-mounts if you're interested and seeing which ones I recommend. I'll link to it here. All right, next up, we're gonna talk about fan noise. So the fan on this is really, really quiet. It has all kinds of vents all on the side of the light. And the only sound that I really notice is whenever you first get power to it or you first turn it on, you kind of hear like a fan spin up initially, like a little zzzz, and then you never hear another noise coming from this, even when you have it at 100%. Very, very quiet and silent light. I'm gonna put this lavalier up to the light so you can hear the sound that it makes whenever you first put power to it. And then let's turn it on and listen to that. The overall light is actually pretty quiet and it's great for filming close range like this. Like I have my ear up to it right now and I can't even hear anything coming from it. So this metal construction probably keeps it nice and cool as opposed to plastic. So they've done a really, really good job on the fan and the heat dissipation of this small, powerful light. To control the light, you have two control wheels here that you either go up or down with this top dial, or you can use this second dial. And as soon as you tap it, you can actually go in to start adjusting that parameter. And then after about two seconds, it'll go back to the main screen. So now I can go up and now I can adjust my color temperature, or I can just punch this button and jump in between a few different presets. Now you can go here under dim and this is where you can control your brightness and the same thing you can jump through some different presets going up by 0, 25, 50, 75 and 100 percent. So that's really convenient if you just need to pop through a couple presets and then of course the green and magenta shift here at the bottom. If you press the set button that'll take you into the menu where you can reset your Bluetooth for connecting to the app which is indicated by this little icon right here. The next icon is the fan icon so you can go down here and right now we're under the smart fan so you can actually go in there and change between quiet and smart but you won't get quite as much power under quiet mode. Now, if you go under group, this is where you can link multiple lights and this is where you can also set them to become the transmitter or the receiver light. If you wanna be able to control other lights, you can pick which one is the master light. RP is the repeater function. So we'll just toggle that back off. And then the lighting curve, you can set to linear, responsiveness, smooth or sharp initial brightness you can actually determine how bright the light will be whenever you turn it on under the effects tab this is where you can change through your different effects and you can control the brightness and the rate at which they 
go with this rate button right here. So that's level five intensity where it's really fast. And then you can go down to one where the effect is much slower. Under hue, you have this little color bar here at the bottom that indicates what color you're going through. And you see the little tab there that shows you where you're at. You're in the yellows. Now we're moving into green, blues, violet, pink, red and you can go through all the colors just like that. And you can also control the saturation and intensity of those as well. The Cold Bore Studio app is easy to sync up and to use with the lights. To add your light, hit the plus icon. All right, so resetting the Bluetooth on this light. Now you can select your light and now we can control the intensity. You can go completely off and the lowest you can go is 1%, which is really nice. You can also control the different CCTs through here, the different gels. If you want to add some typical gels under the color tab, you can change any color you would like here. And then there are the different effects and you can control the intensity and the rate and everything through here as well. Now for things that may need improvement on a future iteration or maybe a new firmware upgrade. And that is for one, the app is a little bit buggy for me. I don't know if that's because I'm on Android and not iPhone, but the app often closes whenever I'm using it, especially if I'm using it with more than one light, it'll just close down on me and I'll have to go back into it. But it is a little bit buggy for me, so it might be a little better for you on your iPhone. So let me know down in the comments what your results are with the Cold Bore Studio app. It is easy to use, I will say that, but a little buggy also have an issue whenever I try to stack up more than one light on each other because I'm only able to use one Bowens mount adapter at a time. The second light being adapted can't have a Bowens mount adapter on it. So I feel like I need some kind of adapter to have on two lights or maybe like some kind of layer diffusion out in front of the lights and not use the Bowens mount adapter at all because you're able to get them fully matched up side by side when you don't have any bones mount adapter but that's just something to think about uh, if you're trying to stack these up and use more than one hyper reflector you're actually not able to do that just because of the way that the design blocks it. Overall, I think the Cold Bore CL60R and the whole series is a really, really cool investment to dive into. Whether you just want to get a couple of the daylight ones and have those as your main key lights, and then even add one or two of these just as your background light to spice things up in the background or add a cool effect to your scene. So you can build up a whole arsenal of these CL60 lights depending on your needs. And I highly recommend checking them out very very cool that you can link up more than one at a time all the way up to 10 lights and then you can use your full-size modifiers so hit the like button if you enjoyed this video and leave me a comment let me know which one of these CL60 lights you'll be picking up the regular CL60 the CL60M or you like this CL60R so all right guys shoot for the stars and I'll see you very soon in the next video